Hi everyone and welcome back to Kimbo's Comfort Kitchen and in today's edition we're going to go and revisit one of my old recipes, uh, Fagadella, Danish meatballs, except with a twist. We're going to turn them into sliders. Now it's the same farce or the same stuffing that we use in the meatballs, but we're going to squish them into little tiny little patties and put them in tiny little buns. And I like the buns part. And then we are going to add some condiments and some cheese and some other things to it that are going to make them absolutely phenomenal. You're going to love this. If you like sliders in any way, shape, or form, whether it's beef, pork, whatever, you're going to love this one. So stay tuned. All right, so let's get started. For those of you that didn't watch my original on how to make fricadella, I'm going to make the stuffing or the filler or the sauce, as they call it from scratch again it's not that complicated the only thing you really need to pay attention to when you're doing this quite honestly is make sure that you don't overwork this that's the same with any ground meat if you're making meatloaf or patties or fricadella the more you work it the more dense it becomes and therefore the tougher it is whereas here I'm getting it straight from the butcher and it's pretty easy to take it right out of the grinder and just break it up loosely so that you can mix all the other ingredients in fairly evenly all right and I've got all the ingredients on my website like the measurements but here we go again so that's two eggs and I've taken and sweated one large onion and cut it into uh, small dice and I'm also going to take oatmeal now for those Danes that are out there going what are you doing using oatmeal for well during the war flour was a lot more expensive and sometimes unavailable than oatmeal was so my grandma used to use oatmeal and that's what I grew up with and I actually like it better so now I'm putting the salt and pepper in and I'm going to switch in a second here instead of using my hands to do this I'm going to use a couple of forks and again this goes back to the old adage of not overworking it whereas if you use the forks and toss this like this you're not grinding the crap out of it again and compacting it which is really what you don't want to do so I'm going to do this for a few minutes and we'll come back when it's all done and now that I've tossed this which is similar to like think of it like tossing a salad I'm going to add the milk now some people like to add whole milk I'm simply using one percent to be honest I really can't tell the difference between the two so I'm just going to keep tossing this like a salad and this is important this is what we call detail you need to not use your hands to toss this and on top of that once this has all been mixed together I'm actually going to let this sit in the fridge for half an hour and let the milk absorb into the entire filling It'll make a big difference when I'm making the patties. All right. So here we are. It's been half an hour. I've let the uh, farce solidify. And I'm going to do something I don't normally do. And that is I'm going to use what they call a single-use product. If any of you have ever watched Alton Brown, which if you haven't, I highly suggest you do. He's amazing. And it's an amazing series over the years. So get on it he's got a lot of really good information in there but having said that one of his things is you know you don't buy single-use items well I did I bought this one and it's from Starfrit and I'm gonna try it out and see how it works normally I have to eyeball it I try to make uh, my patties about 65 grams and this little gizmo here doesn't take up much room in the kitchen obviously and I can just sort of put that in there and then I'm gonna press that down like that and then basically just lift it up 
take the patty out. And these are pretty delicate, so this actually helps. But the point being is that every time I make this, they're gonna be exactly the same size. And by being exactly the same size, or more or less, it means they're all gonna cook evenly. So it takes one more step out of the out of the game, as they say. So let's do that. This is actually working pretty good. And there you go. So I'm gonna take all of these and make all these little patties the same way. Once I've done that, we will come back. So we're doing three patties here just for a show. I mean, you could put nine in here quite easily or have two pans with another nine if you're wondering how you do it for multiple guests. But here's the other thing too, is you can take all of these and you can also um, put them in the oven at uh, under 200 degrees and then just leave them to warm. Now I'm putting Imitol cheese on these, but you could put cheddar, you could put mozzarella, you can put whatever kind of cheese on there and if they're lactose intolerant, let's see. Oh yeah, none. But I'm putting those on right now and I'm gonna throw these in a warming oven for just a few minutes. Like I said, I did um, two minutes on the first side at half uh, heat, and I did three minutes on the other side at half heat. And by the time I put these in the oven, and I'm gonna leave them there for about five minutes, it's, they are gonna be perfect. The cheese will be melted. I'll have all my condiments ready, and Bob's your uncle. It's all in the details. Details. I've had the patties in the oven for about a minute, and you can see all of this. This is a fat, leftover fat, and avocado oil, and butter. And I'm going to put these buns in here and let them soak it all up. And this is the difference, because it's what we call details. So when you do this, this will not only toast them, but it flavors the buns. And I'm not going to leave them on for very long, just long enough for them to start to brown. But it will make all the difference in the presentation. And you do that on your second bun, and if you need more space what you do is you hold the rest of your patties in the oven and get another uh, pan ready and you can even use bacon fat and butter or just canola or you can use avocado but the important part here is to make sure you fry these they need to be well done like that and these are almost perfect right now so we're gonna go to the next stage all right, so now we have come to the denouement, the moment of truth. We're gonna build these uh, fricadilla sliders or pork sliders. And it's always a question of the devil is in the... So, here's where we go. I have fried these buns. And the next build on here is going to be remoulade, which you can find on my website, but if you want to use relish, use relish. But this is a very Danish thing. And then I'm going to pull the sliders out of the oven. They've been, there, been in there for about, oh, less than five minutes. Just enough to melt the Emmental. And the patties are done. There we go. And the next thing we're going to do is we are going to put on some mustard. Now I'm using a German hot mustard. Just a dollop. Because it's going to get squished down. You can use Dijon, you can use American mustard, you can use whatever you like on it. Whatever makes suits your fancy. And then I'm going to take some oikon or red cabbage, stewed red cabbage. 
and I'm gonna put that on top of it. And it's slightly warm, it's not hot. So it's, it's not super important, but you know what? It's always nice to have your condiment exactly the way you want it. So that's where we're going with that. And then I'm going to finish, our second finish is going to be a gork salad. Now, you can go to my site for the gork salad, but I use a lot less salt than the traditional gork salad. And some people like it and some Danes don't. They think it's a travesty that I am not using all that salt. Well, personally, this is what I like. So that's what I'm showing you. And you don't have to put this on. You can put on your own condiments. It's all good. Now, to top it all off, let's do some caramelized onions, which as I said again, you can see on my website how to caramelize them properly. But you know what? It's, a, it's really actually quite important. Um, the sugar, the uh, caramelized sugar that comes from the onion is quite amazing. And then on the top bun, I am using a smoked mayo. Now don't go out and buy smoked mayo. It's super easy to make. Go out and buy some mayonnaise and add some liquid smoke to it. And you've just saved yourself a bundle. So here you go. And this is the Danish Fakadella slider. Or in English we would call it a pork slider but it doesn't sound nearly as cool. All right, so let's take a look and see what she looks like on the inside. This is a really good fucking slider. Anyway, babe to come, and I hope everybody enjoys this. Thanks, bye. Thank you.